Hey guys, how you doing? So I wanted to jump on here right quick and answer some questions. I know a bunch of you had questions for me. Um, so this is not your normal plane video. If you want, if you don't want to know anything about all this crap, jump on out. I, I completely understand. Um, I'm going through some of the comments about, you know, my health stuff and everything that's going on and, and y'all are amazing. Thank you so very much for, for asking. Um, first question is, uh, and a couple of you asked, have I considered a sleep study and a CPAP? Uh, actually I sleep on a CPAP. Uh, I've slept on a CPAP since, I mean, a long time, 10, 12 years, something like that. And I love my CPAP. The nice thing about CPAP is as soon as I put it on, my brain's like, oh, you want to go to sleep, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's awesome. As to the counter stinking, um, maybe that's a, uh, um, what is that called, a, a spoonerism or something, or, or like a, a Freudian slip. You know, it's, there's so much of it, it really stinks. But, yeah, I, I've, I've changed it. I've updated it. Uh, can't wait for you to make plane noises. Me too. Looking forward to that, being able to sit in there and actually make plane noises. Um, a lot of you are asking about law enforcement stuff. I, I, I am reluctant to talk about law enforcement on this channel. One, because I don't want to randomly demonetize because apparently that is a thing that happens on YouTube. Um, and two, because I know a lot of you don't really want to know about that stuff. But real quick, um, I'm all for more training. I think that that's one of the things that every law enforcement officer I know uh, agrees with is the lack of training in law enforcement. So uh, just, just to give you some example, when I was in the Army, we trained 25% of the time at least, maybe more. Um, whereas in most law enforcement, most municipalities, most counties, you train 10 to 15 hours a year um, and that's, there's just not enough time. And if you're talking about defunding the police, uh, you can either defund the police or you can ask for more training. You can't have both. It's, it's a mutually exclusive proposition. Um, and so you just have to, I think you have to bite the bullet and pay more, uh, low pay rate. Also you, you get what you pay for kind of thing. That's another issue. I mean, most police officers I know are good, honest, hardworking people that just want to do a tough job. But for a community that love, usually, you know, they love the community, they want to help, and they don't get the recognition or the appreciation that uh, they should. There are certainly some bad eggs. I mean, there's no, there's no denying that, but there's bad eggs in every career, no matter which one it is. And so I, I think there's a lot of protesters out there that want everyone to know that, you know, 99.9% .9 of all protesters are good people but they don't afford the same consideration to police officers. All police officers are bad. Um, and that's, it's, un, it's unfortunate that that's what's going on. I don't like that. I, of course, I black the blue. I, I, uh, I, I hate where the world is going. And, and ultimately, I am of the opinion that a country without law enforcement is a country without laws. And so uh, that's not gonna end well. Um, let's see. Other people are saying, hope you feel better. I feel a million times better, so I've figured it all out. So here's what happened. So I just came out of the ER. I was actually in the ER two days ago, and my blood pressure had spiked. It was like 224 over, or no, yeah, like 224 over 127 or something like that. It was like this ridiculously high number, like, like stroke range. And <laughs> what had happened? I quit coffee, cold turkey. Um, don't do that. The reason that that was stupid is because I stopped taking my vitamins. So I take a, I used to take a daily supplement every day, just a vitamin, you know, it's, all of you should, it's a good idea. I stopped, I just got out of the habit, I ran out of it and I forgot to go buy more and it just kind of fell off the radar. Well, so what happened is because I quit drinking coffee, the number one thing that I was getting for my coffee other than caffeine was potassium. There's 115 or something like that uh, grams of, of, or milligrams, not grams, of uh, potassium in a cup of coffee. And so because I completely stopped drinking coffee and went to water, uh, suddenly I became hypokalemic, which is uh, severely lacking in potassium. Well, the side effects of that are heart murmur, which is something that I was having. And I'm going to guess that was also causing the, high, the, the spike in super high blood pressure. And so things just got really wacky 
out of control and they put me on oh my goodness a lot of drugs to combat the blood pressure and it really came down to a potassium pill uh, so I'm, I'm taking potassium I just had a banana and, uh, and I've got my, uh, my daily vitamin because I, I wasn't getting what it was. It was all, it's all, this whole thing came because of the stop and drinking coffee. So um, drink, uh, drink coffee if you want, but if you do decide to quit, take potassium because, damn, this was no joke. It took them a long time to get my blood pressure under control. And, in fact, even while I was in the hospital, they were pumping IVs into me of the same medication they give women that are pregnant. And I guess they're like, oh, this stuff always works. And they're like, oh, you'll just need 10 milligrams. You'll be good to go. And 80 milligrams later, I was, my blood pressure was still crazy high. So they called the silent killer. Uh, I am going to go talk to a, a nephrologist, I think it is, the, the kidney doctors, because your kidneys control your blood pressure. And, you know, I've got a consult with one of them because I just, I don't want to make, make sure I didn't ruin my kidneys because... That would suck. I don't really want to be on dialysis. But it was just a it was just a weird fluke thing that happened. I had this weird blood pressure spike and it was all because of potassium. So at least now I've got it under control. Let's see what else. Um a lot of you ask about law enforcement and I like I said I I really do want to go and talk about it, but ultimately it was the right decision for me and uh yeah, mm, we'll see. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. What is your total build time? Ooh, I'll have to look that up. It's going to be a lot. Uh, my build time, so I think they say you should build, it should take you like 2,200 hours or something like that. I'm not that far along, but I've, I've stopped keeping real good records of how much time I've put in. Uh, typically, I go out there and I'm out there for at least an hour when I'm out, sometimes as many as three on a normal day. And then I'll have, I'll have these wacky days where um, I'll go out there and I'll be out there for 12 hours straight. Um, and that's the trick is always go out there, even if you know you're just going to have a, a quick, you know, a, a, a quick day, still go. Even if you just go out and stare at it, just, just go out and do something because you'll never get it done otherwise. And that's, that's my big thing. Uh, giving up caffeine, but notice a monster can on the bench. <laughs> uh, so yes, there was a monster can in the background in the footage. Uh, I, I was really bad about monsters. Um, I, I have totally quit caffeine. Remember, this, the footage that you see often is sometimes a week in the past. That was like two weeks almost in the past when you saw that footage. Uh, so... Uh, you didn't bust me, dang it. That, that, was, that was old footage. I have not had a monster in, in two weeks. Um, switch to tea. I have switched to tea. Actually, I've switched to chamomile. Um, I've tried a couple other teas, but uh, chamomile is... I like chamomile. It's pretty good. Let's see. Um, do, do, dude, get yourself an Oculus Quest VR. I actually have an HTC Vive. Um, I really enjoy VR. I'm a huge fan of virtual reality. I am really looking forward to the Microsoft um, Flight Sim. It looks amazing, and I have a full Flight Sim rig. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I will say that I do need a new VR headset. So the Oculus, I have the very first a developer version of the Oculus, the square one, really horrible, low resolution, really bad uh, latency. Like it made me ill. Um, and then I went from that to the HTC Vive when it came out and loved it. It's still a little screen dory. And so I want to get the, uh, what's the steam one? The, the, uh, what's the name of the steam headset? That'll bug me. the Steam Index, the Valve Index. I want to get the Valve Index because I think right now it's probably one of the better ones and it works with everything I already have. Uh, but, you know, it's money that I could be spending elsewhere. Even though I do have like a big big space in here, this room is actually huge. Um, you just see the wall right behind me. Let's see. What else? Dude, lots, lots of, lots of law enforcement. Congratulations and all that stuff. 
It's a shame that 90% of the good cops have to pay the price for 10% of the bad. I agree with that statement. In fact, I would say the number of bad is actually a lot less than that. It depends on what you're looking at as bad. Um, the A lot of people will see an officer enforce the law or do something that they're perfectly legal to do and just assume that that officer is committing a crime or is bad. And it's like, well, that's not necessarily bad. The other thing is, is a lot of times officers will um, get in trouble for doing something behind the scenes and you won't see that. And that's part of the problem, really. That's, that's actually a bad thing. So uh, officers are turned in by other officers all the time. You know, they talk about the, the blue veil or whatever it is. It doesn't kind of doesn't exist. But what ends up happening is I think a lot of officers forget that police officers have the badge that they have because the community has authorized them to have it. Meaning if the community doesn't agree to be policed, then you as a police officer can't do your job. And we're seeing that now in Seattle and other places. So officers are beholding to the community. And what that means is if an officer screws up, you need to, uh, the, the, the administration needs to punish that officer in a visible way so that, that people can see, hey, look, here's what he did, here's the punishment that was administered, so that they know that it wasn't just swept under the rug. Because otherwise, you know, perception is reality. The perception then is, oh, we got away with it. When, when usually, no, he doesn't, you just don't know what the punishment was. And so that is a problem that needs to be addressed along with training. Uh, lots of training. Every officer would tell you there's not enough training. Do, do, do. Someone says, so uh, Mike Pate uses oscillating multi-tool for cutting a lot of hatch panels. Ooh, I cannot think that that would work well with aluminum. I, I, that aluminum is so thin that if you use an oscillating cutter, I think it would just booger up the hell out of the end of that. I, I cannot think that that would work well uh, on a, uh, a piece of aluminum. It's perfect for carbon fiber, uh, but f which is what Mike uses. But for... For aluminum, mm. unless someone knows better, I really cannot think that that would be a good idea. Uh, someone says, get some thin super glue and apply to cut off wheels. They'll last longer and be less prone to shattering. Holy crap, I never even thought of that. Yeah, some really thin CA and just put it on there. That is an excellent idea. You are getting a heart. That, that's a really good idea. Wow. See, things like that, I would have never thought of that. That's just brilliant. Well done. Let's see. Uh, thank you for your service. You're welcome. Sucks for your talents. Uh, a lot of you are under the impression that I've retired, and I, I guess that's the wording I used. I didn't retire. I just stopped working there. I mean, I guess that's retired in that I'm not going to do that line of work anymore. Um, but I'm not getting like a pension or anything like that. So uh, there is no pension at the end of that rainbow. But I, yeah, I mean, I can talk to each of the incidents that are going on out there if you guys really want. And it seems like a lot of you do. Um, it's, it's not a good time to be in law enforcement, and it really comes down to a lot of people are angry with law enforcement, and that's not unjustified. Um, but I think some of that anger is comes from ignorance in that they don't know what the law is, and they don't know what police are allowed or not allowed to do within the law. Now, one of the things that really set me off and made me not want to do this anymore was when COVID, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word, but whenever the beer flu came out, a lot of, um, a lot of community leaders, um, county commissioners, people kind of in a position of power, for lack of a better term, try to invent rules and laws for the police to enforce that were not constitutional. And you have to understand, police officers from day one swear an oath to uphold the Constitution, not to uphold 
the wishes and desires of, you know, a county commissioner, just as an example. Um, and so that's, that's a thing. Um, it, it, you know, you, you give me some unlawful orders and tell me to go uh, enforce that, I'm going to say no. And so that, you know, there's some pushback there. And, and there are a lot of police officers that are actually in the same boat with me. They're not going to enforce that. There's, there's, a, there's a notion out there that all police officers are power hungry or they were, someone posted in one of my previous videos that, you know, I became a police officer because I was bullied as a kid and now it's my turn to bully. And it's like, Dude, where are you getting that from? No, I was never bullied. It's, that's stupid. Um, for me, the reason I became a police officer was very simple. I, was in the, I served in the military, and I became a police officer in 2001 uh, in Texas. I was a police officer in two different municipalities. I got out, for, out of it for a while, became, you know, went back into software, and then went back into law enforcement here in Georgia. I, I've been through two police academies in my life, which means I've been pepper sprayed twice <sighs> and tased. <sighs> By the way, if you have a choice between taser and pepper spray, take the taser. Um, so yeah, I, I know a lot about it, and I think the reason I did it was simply because something my father told me many years ago was that a lot of good people sacrifice, and in some cases sacrificed everything, in order to afford us the lifestyle that we have today. And I took that to mean back then that I'd be a pretty crappy person if I didn't do the same. And I don't think he meant it that way, but that's just how I took it. It's why I joined the military and ultimately why I did law enforcement. Um, well, also in my brother, uh, my stepbrother was in the army and he made law enforcement, I mean, he made the military rather sound way cooler than it was. He lied. Um, <laughs> trying to think what else here. I'm scrolling down. So there's a lot of different, a lot of different, uh, questions what's back to software what's next yeah so i'm probably going to go back into software uh, right now i'm just kind of biding my time especially with this health thing i'm trying to get that sorted uh playing on the stock market a little doing a little day trading and profitable oddly um we'll see what happens i think the plan is ultimately go back into software it's kind of what i want to do um but you know it's it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It takes time to do all these things. And I haven't been in software in a couple of years. And so the problem with that is, is I kind of have to relearn everything. Um, even though I, I did it for 20 years, I can do it. I can jump right in right now. If you need a Ruby developer, I can dive in and do it. I just need to go back in and go, okay, let me remind myself how these things work. And, you know, what's the latest whiz bang, go faster striping thing that I need to learn because, you know, the software industry changes so quickly. Um, let's see. Well, I guess I probably should have been more prepared and gone through and built a list of questions before I did all this stuff. So anyways, guys, I'm going to cut that. This is 17 minutes. So I hope that answers some immediate questions. If you guys have more questions, feel free to ask and I will get to them ASAP. I may do it in this or in, excuse me, in one of the videos. Um, yeah. So I cannot say this enough. You guys really keep me motivated to do this. I want to say thank you very much. Um, I really enjoy the plane. I'm, I've got more time to do it now. Uh, I don't have these horrible 12 hour shifts that I have to worry about. And ultimately, uh, I, I can't wait to see this thing fly. I am still weird, kind of weirded out about how I'm going to afford the engine. Um, you know, Lycoming IO 540 is not cheap. Um, let's see what do they cost today. They cost like what? 48,000 or something like that. Um, they're, they're not, they ain't cheap. So I'm probably going to get a rebuilt or something like that. And this is where everyone brings up, well, I'll just put a, you know, put an, uh, a Chevy engine in it or something like that. I'm probably never going to do that. And I've talked to that in other videos. It has to do with that, you know, one was built specifically for this task. One wasn't. So we'll see what, we'll see where we go. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to put the Lycoming in it. I just have to figure out afford, how to afford it. Other than that, though, I am going to keep hammering away on all the things uh, I need to stop working on the fuselage and finish my wings at some point, especially the wiring. Uh, but, you know, one task at a time. It's, it's still that elephant I'm, I'm trying to nibble away at. And so, yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. See you next time.